Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome everyone to our Mass for the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Welcome to all of you watching at home. And we begin Mass as always to looking at ourselves. Today we, we read or hear in today's Gospel the parable of the darnel and the wheat. The wheat and the weeds we could say. So maybe we take this time at the beginning of Mass to look at the places in our lives where we have weeds growing and ask God to take them from us and make them into something good. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God other than you who cares for everything to whom you might have to prove that you never judge unjustly. Your justice has its source in strength. Your sovereignty over all makes you lenient to all. You show your strength when your sovereign power is questioned and you expose the insolence of those who know it. But disposing of such strength, you are mild in judgment you govern us with great lenience, for you have only to will and your power is there. By acting thus you have taught a lesson to your people, how, how the virtuous man must be kindly to his fellow men, and you have given your sons the good hope that after sin you will grant repentance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The response is... O Lord, you are good and forgiving. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations shall come to adore you and glorify your name, O Lord. For you are great and do marvellous deeds. You who alone are God. O Lord, you are good and forgiving. But you, God of mercy and compassion, slow to anger, O Lord, abounding in love and truth, turn and take pity on me. O Lord, 
You are good and forgiving. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. The Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means, and that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put the parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everybody was asleep, his enemy came, sowed down all among the wheat and made off. When the new wheat sprouted and ripened, the dark appeared as well. The older servants went to him and said, Sir, was it not good seed that you sowed in your field? If so, where does the dark come from? Some enemy has done this, he answered. And the servant said, Do you want us to go and weed it out? But he said, No, because when you weed out the garden, you might pull up the wheat with it. Let them both grow till the harvest. And at harvest time, I shall say to the reapers, First collect the garden and tie it in bundles to be burnt, then gather the wheat into my barn. He put another parable before them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub of all and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and shelter its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, till it was leavened all through. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he would never speak to them except in parables. This would still fulfil the prophecy. I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. Then leaving the crowds, he went to the house, and his disciples came to him and said, Explain the parable about the dam in the field to us. He said in reply, The sower of the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed is the subjects of the kingdom, the dam are the subjects of the evil one, the enemy who sowed them the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, the reapers are the angels. Well, then just as the dam is gathered up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that provoke offences, and all who do evil, and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And the virtuous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The line picked out from our first reading, after sin you will grant repentance, and the response to our psalm, O oh Lord, you are good and forgiving. Tell us the emphasis that the Church wants us to pick up from today's readings, an emphasis on God's mercy and forgiveness. Now that is not what we might initially pick up from today's Gospel, which concludes, the Son of Man will send his angels. And they will gather out of his kingdom all the things that provoke offences, and all who do you evil, and throw them into the blazing furnace, where they'll be weeping and grinding with teeth. Then the virtuous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. What I love about my Catholic faith is the great balance and realism that I find within it. It is challenging, yes, and it puts before us great ideals. But alongside that is a great emphasis on the love and the mercy of God. Even the greatest of sinners has reason for hope if he turns to our God revealed in Jesus. Today's parable of the wheat and the dam recognises the reality of our world and our lives, a mixture of good and bad. But note 
there is no rush to judgment. That has to wait until the end of time. God gives people every opportunity to repent, to have a change of heart, turn to him. This serves to emphasise also the importance of praying for the dead. They won't be judged until the end of time. In the meantime, they can do nothing for themselves, but we can help them with our prayers. And in praying for them, we also help ourselves, for they pray for us. I'm sure that's one reason why I'm so blessed in many ways, despite my sins and failings, as every day I pray for those that I have known who have died, and I'm sure they pray for me. However, back to the Gospel and the reality of our lives, good and bad alongside each other. So why doesn't God get rid of all the bad people and make the world so much better? Well, if he did, as he explains, he would end up getting rid of a lot of us too. None of us are perfect, are we? So where would he draw the line? Who would survive? As the great Psalm 129, the day of Profundus says, If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, for this will reveal you. Thankfully, unlike us, God doesn't rush to judgment. He gives us every possible opportunity to repent. We just have to take those opportunities. Confession, anybody? Now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Amen. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to church the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father as God's family. We pray for all teachers around the world that they may help the children that they teach to grow and learn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all the children in the world that they will have a chance to go to school. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our parish, family and friends, that we may learn from one another how to be kind and how to make the world a fairer place. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your kingdom on earth, O Lord, are found both wholesome wheat and darnel. May every man and woman strive to root out what is evil and bring to fruition the good you have planted within them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for the lately dead, Kathleen Toland, Brenda Frost, Pat Cahill, Joseph Smith, Vincent Murphy, Patricia Gracious, Mary Fearick, Mary Shields, Peter Henderson, Betty Wallace, Robert Aston, Paul Jeff Nolan, Siobhan Drugan, Tracy Flynn, Mary Moore Peter, Margaret Dawson, George and Audrey Park, John Dutton, Peter Green, Breege Bolger, Greta Stevenson, Cecil James Bash, and Audrey Judge. And for those whose anniversaries are at this time, Len Bloor, Betty Prescott, the Beecher family, Leonard Kelly, Annie Kelly, Paul Mulvey, Michael Collini. And for the sick, Lily, Pat Ridings, Bridget Spillane, Eileen O'Malley, Con McGuinness, Ellen Queenan, John Broadley, Anne Rowley, Anna Briganza, Jim Leeming, Catherine Hampson, Terry Corrigan, Mary Shore, Gerald Shore, Claire Neary, Laurie Donahue, Sadie Deegan, Stella Bowden, Mike O'Hare, Carmel Hanley, Linda Powley, Annie Lavin, Carmen Adela Rubio, Anne Coriston, Catherine Leach, Pat Coffey, Joe Burke, 
Michael Martin, Marion Kerrigan, Penelope Kirkbride, Michael Clancy, Maureen Brennan, Tommy Joyce, John Bowen, Mary Wakeling, Malachi Greeny and family. Special attention for Isaac and Finley, and we pray especially, of course, for all those affected by the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we make all those prayers as ever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruits of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. That the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, Father and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and the Blessed Joseph, the Spouse. With the Blessed Apostles, with St. Catherine, the Savior. And all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We have merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now, we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And to suffer each other the sign of peace. Just remember, I think someone posted something on our Facebook page, the sign language sign of peace. I think it's something like, like that, the goodness of your heart. So maybe if we do that at home, the peace be with you. I apologise if I've got that wrong. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. He gives food to those who fear him. 
Let's us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. just want to uh, thank you all for heeding the advice um, that we gave you um, last week, uh, first Sunday Masses. Uh, we only had numbers in the upper 20s at most, any of the Masses, which made it very manageable, uh, no problems. Uh, so don't be any rush to come to Mass, keep watching online if you feel happier with that. We will continue that for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, there is still no obligation to attend Mass, so if you're elderly, if you've got health conditions, if you've got any concerns or worries at all, just watch online. Um, but there is, there is room for a few more to come uh, during the week, particularly, uh, you might think about. Um, and just, I suggest what you might like to do for the first time, if you have any concerns, just come along towards the end of Mass and come forward and receive Holy Communion and you didn't leave and just get the feel of it like that when you be able to receive the great gift of Jesus in the Eucharist in that manner just to see how it, how it is. Um, but thank you particularly to our stewards, all those who helped and, and have helped to keep us safe and who have made a great commitment and how to clean the church afterwards as well. So it's a special thanks to you for being all um, services at all without your help. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.